Mm-hmm. What's up, Negroes and Negrets? Welcome back to the 224 Podcast. We got another video for y'all today. This one, this one is near and dear to my heart. Have you ever scrolled through TV or maybe you online or something and you like on YouTube or whatever and you come across a video that you just you just can't get off your heart? I got a show that is near and dear to my heart. And it's TLC's best funeral ever. Psych a lot. Can we just address something real quick? Like, why do we make any and everything a celebrity. Like, why is there a celebrity funeral director? Like, can can some nigga explain to me exactly what is that? What's a celebrity funeral director, bro? Like, how the fuck are you a celebrity doing that shit? Like, niggas come in and be like, oh, I'm so happy that you are the one that is handling my father's funeral and then like fucking banders and shit, confetti come down. He's like, this is his time. Like Michael Bay, like fucking explosions in the background. Do you think you walk into a funeral home and Michael Buffer is announcing the funeral director coming out? Uh, let's get ready to rumble. That's not happening. Like who the fuck does shit like that? It's not like an NBA game where it's like starting funeral director at. <laughs> Shady Acres Funeral Home. This nigga over like that's who? Why TLC? Y'all, it's the Learning Channel. TLC stands for the Learning Channel. Y'all had shows where people have been eating the ashed remains of their loved ones. I guess with the transfer of his cremains, you know, some got into the cardboard box as well, and they spilled out on my hands. And I didn't want to wipe wipe them off because that's my husband. I don't want to wipe him away. Um, so I just licked it off my fingers. Motherfuckers eating dirty diapers. Mmm, this one's soft. I love it. It just tastes amazing. I have one while I'm cooking in the kitchen. I have one in my drawers. I have one while I'm sleeping. I keep some in my trunk. I keep some in my pocketbook. No, for real. This is good. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Okay, continue. Fucking cars. My name is Nathaniel. I'm 27 years old. And I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Morning, baby. My handsome man. Amusement park ride. My name is Linda. I'm 56 years old. I live outside of Tampa, Florida with my husband of three years. I am happily married to a carnival ride called a skydiver. His name is Bruce, and we've known each other since 1981. Like, y'all need to stop with the madness. There's no such thing as a fucking celebrity funeral director. Stop. Please. We're stupid enough already in this country. (laughs) We never needed... This show is stupid. And I'm glad this shit ain't on the air anymore because it's dumb. But unfortunately, you see reruns of it. You see fucking clips on on YouTube. It's never going to go away. It's stuck with us. And that's all thanks to TLC. The Learning Channel. So I said this shit was canceled because it only aired like eight or nine episodes. The first season had like five episodes. I think the second season had like three of them. They cut that shit off. So basically, the show took place in Dallas, Texas at Golden Gate Funeral Home and spotlighted the funeral home and its employees while they planned a few of the over-the-top funerals that were had in their care. And I say over-the-top ideas, because these things should have just stayed ideas. If they want to dunk a basketball, Golden Gate Funeral Home can make that happen for them. These niggas put someone's remains into a football and then kick that shit over a goalpost. Like, why? 
Why would you do that? Please explain. Like, bro, I, I've been to a lot of funerals before, right? No stranger to the homegoing services, especially in our community, like the African-American community, man. See a lot of this shit. And people, you know, black people get a little emotional and black people get a little crazy with shit sometimes. So you see a lot of different things that, you know, different funeral services for different people, you know what I mean? Depending on who, how eccentric the family is, you know what I mean? Like, you see a lot of stuff. But, I mean, this shit that you see on Best Funeral Ever, like, this is some, this some off-the-wall stuff, man. An article written and posted on EntertainmentWeekly.com by Annie Barrett described the funerals featured on an episode like this. Funeral number one. How is this not totally sweet? Judy love to bowl, okay? Funeral number two. Everyone in the audience except Darrell and Terry Jenkins' son, Michael, is trying not to laugh as their urns are walked down the aisle. It's not clear how or how long ago Michael's parents died, but the timing seems to have coincided nicely with Michael's kid in a candy shop desire to be on TV. Bruh. My mom and dad had a great time, says Michael. And I think all that's sweet. They lived a great life together. But Michael means today at their urn wedding of note, his parents have recently transformed from urns into chocolate figurines of urns. Has this all been an elaborate ruse so Michael can stage his own dream wedding to his sister? Who can say? Not those chocolate urns, that's for sure. What? Funeral number two seems completely and utterly fucked up. I don't know who the fuck Michael is, but whoever is involved in this nigga's life, they either need to get this nigga some help, put that nigga in a straitjacket. Something ain't right about him, bro. Funeral number three is for Quentin, who loved breakfast so much he ate it three times a day. I don't see anything wrong with eating breakfast three times a day. I like breakfast and shit. You know what I'm saying? Who wouldn't want a big ass omelet at seven o'clock at night? Hmm. And then he died. Ladies dress in sunny side up eggs while the gentlemen present their Sunday best. Their pancake stacks. It's a spirited affair that clearly calls for no nonsense bacon security. A gospel choir sings the following culinary hymnal, which nearly moves me to tears because I just get it. You know, breakfast is definitely the best three meals of the day. Breakfast, breakfast, Waffles, bacon and eggs, and it's all mine. Breakfast, breakfast, eating breakfast in the morning time. What a healthy thing that sits before my eyes. Eating breakfast in the morning time. I love Quentin's grandmother Sandra's reaction as the preacher urges the mourners in the morning time to throw a little sausage on the side. Bro, again, with funeral number three. Although, as a breakfast advocate, I don't see anything wrong with shouting out to the fucking mountaintops that you love breakfast. Having a breakfast-themed funeral seems a little fucked up, but that one wasn't as bad as motherfucking number two. Number two still right now the worst one, but we'll continue reading to see what else we got in this motherfucker. Yeah. And finally, in funeral number four, the casket of Olympic gold medalist Ronnie Ray Smith part of the 1968 4x100 meter relay, somehow crosses the finish line first, even though all signs pointed to that garage store go-kart finishing in third place against three able-bodied racers. Did they put this nigga in a garage, in a shopping cart? God damn. They put this nigga in a shopping cart. Oh, man. And they threw the nigga. They raced them against other people. They put the nigga in a... Man, all right, let me... <laughs> this one about to jump over number two. I am confusion. They totally let him win. Oh, my God. This is such a ridiculous mess. I can barely handle it. But just like Ronnie, I pressed on and kept whizzing around the track of happy tears, and I love it. What funeral 
would be complete without a medal ceremony. Hashtag crumpled corpse. Look, bro. <laughs> Look, bro. I'm letting my family know right now as video footage, fucking legal documentation. When I die, bro, I don't give a fuck what I may have said to you on my deathbed. If you niggas put me in a shopping cart and push me anywhere, I will haunt you motherfuckers for the rest of your natural fucking lives. Don't put me in a shopping cart and push me down the street. I don't want that. Who? Why? Ronnie's family think he's a gold medalist. This is a U.S. This is a United States. He's an American hero, bro. Why would y'all do that to him? This is, bro. I see why this show was taken off the air now. This is insane, bro. This is craziness. This is this is the literal craziness what they're doing to these people, bro. This is insane. This funeral funeral home should have been shut. This whole shit should have been burnt down. Forget being shut down. Government should have came in and nuked this motherfucking place. Y'all come on over. We're gonna get some chopping off the castle. Y'all come on over. Get some chocolate for me. This is to my daddy. What? What the fuck? Yo, if y'all enjoying the video so far, listen, man, click that like button. Smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, comment in the comment section below. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Also, share this video with your friends and on your social media platforms, man. We appreciate y'all so much, man. We love y'all. We appreciate the likes and the comments and the shares and the subscribing and all that other stuff. Now, back to the video. So I'm sure a lot of people who came to this funeral home with these weird ass weddings love the fact that this place, you know, made their dreams come true. But it was some people did not appreciate the golden touch at Golden Gate. John Beckwith Jr. has been sued by 17 families citing careless handling of their loved one's remains, and it's expected that there's even more lawsuits down the pike, so shit not looking good for cuz, bro. Wouldn't let that shit happen to me, though. Allegedly. If you weren't paying the right amount of money for those extravagant, crazy-ass funerals, certain things could happen, like the ashes of your loved ones could be misplaced with someone else's ashes that some bodies were being disposed of incorrectly or with even without permission. So it's a lot of crazy shit that's going on right now. As I'm reading this stuff, it is it it don't look good. Really? Yeah, I mean that has to be a mistake because Hell nah. one person said that her 48 year old mother's body was shown to her before the wake which was an open casket viewing free of any makeup, partially decomposed, severely bloated in the stomach area. And she was still dressed up in a hospital gown, not the dress the family provided for it. God damn. Not to mention there was a foul smell coming from her body because the body had not been stored or embalmed properly. This person also had to wait over an hour to sort of prep the deceased with her own makeup and perfume before employees were able to find the body to begin with after she was presented the wrong body in the first place. Another person said her father's ashes were spread in the funeral home's second cemetery in Tallulah, Louisiana, not Dallas, Texas, but Tallulah, Louisiana, without her permission. For months, they had been waiting on when they could receive their father's ashes. And only after just showing up one day to the funeral home, after having to wait an hour, she was told that the ashes had been disposed of in Louisiana. What? That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, family. And another said that she found white pebbles inside of the urn that should have carried her father's ashes, which, by the way, this story included the fact that the deceased had been transferred to the Dallas location from the Fort Worth location without permission. If y'all doing shit without people's permission with their loved ones, with the remains of their loved ones, 
that's already shady dealing right there, man. You talking about somebody's fucking family members who have recently deceased, bro. That's like very touchy at that point. Niggas still going through the mourning process. And the fact that y'all just willy nilly with people's motherfucking remains is, bro, that's bad business, bro. Someone else was said to have received multiple urns after cremation of their loved one, even though that person was small and there was no way their ashes should have filled more than one urn. Nope. Hold on. Wait a minute. Y'all mean to tell me y'all just like cremating several niggas at the same time? Just like, man, just put, look, just give me that power right there, nigga. I don't. I know the person was five too. Just give me that shit. This nigga looked like he was. Uh, I mean, just fuck it, nigga. Give me the ashes. Like y'all can't do shit like that, bro. That is, <sighs> God damn it, Golden Gate. It's Golden Gate coming forward denying all claims. Another said their loved one was prematurely cremated. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. Before I continue to read this one, the fuck is a premature cremation? I heard a premature ejaculation, heard a premature celebrations, but I never heard of a premature cremation. What the fuck is that? Let me start that over again, bro. Another said their loved one was prematurely cremated, so they weren't even able to correctly identify the remains of the deceased. Then to make matters worse, a slideshow of photos that was set for a different family was played during the service. Look, they're like, okay. Uncle Jimmy, I love you. I love you and I miss you. I can't wait to. Who the fuck is that nigga? Like that? You can't. <sighs> Man, Golden Gate, y'all are, are fucking up. America, explain. But if you thought these allegations against Golden Gate Funeral Home started here, you'd be motherfucking wrong. We talking about Golden Gate Funeral Home, nigga. They are trying to win the triple crown and fucked up in this, bro. Like, you have to understand, but niggas who do shit like this, it didn't just start here. It didn't, it didn't just go from good, 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 and then hit the fucked up. No, it's been fucked up for a while. Because one of the employees came out, started snitching on these niggas. Here's the report. This employee stated that rotting bodies were stacked and stored inside an unrefrigerated truck in the parking lot when COVID deaths were high. So, as it should have, an investigation started by the Texas Funeral Service Commission. It's a funeral service commission? I I realize that. That's I feel like they fucked up a long time ago by even letting this place be commissioned. Look. Look at this nigga. Just look at him. I'm ashamed that it was a nigga. I'm I, it's not even that I'm ashamed. I look. I'm amazed and ashamed at the same motherfucking time. I'm amazed by how creative niggas can be, but I'm also ashamed at how lazy niggas like this could be. That nigga took these people money, allegedly, and then fucked their families over, allegedly. So we'll let the legal system play out in the Texas Funeral Service Commission do that motherfucking job, but this is again TLC. You fucked up, and you fucked up big time. What's the next show gonna be TLC? Huh? Fight Zoo? <laughs> what the fuck are y'all gonna do next? I'm so done with TLC, man. I'm I really am. I I'm just done. That's the end of that, man. We appreciate y'all. That's the end of the video. Y'all enjoyed the content, man. Please like and comment on this video. Share this video, and if you haven't done already. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate y'all also, man. Find us on social media. Follow us on our uh, social media uh, platforms. Facebook, Twitter, IG, TikTok, all at the 224 Podcast. Just find us there. Follow us, man. We appreciate it. Also, if you fuck with podcasts and you listen to podcasts, listen to ours. We're on every platform. We're on Apple, Spotify, our iHeart. What the fuck is I, our heart? iHeart. Everywhere, man. At the 224 Podcast, we appreciate y'all. We appreciate the love. We're out of here. See y'all next time. Peace.